Okay, students, let's begin lecture. We're almost at the end of February, so that means the end of the Abraham Lincoln quotes. This is, a, this is a good one. It's one everybody can remember. Nearly all men can stand adversity, but if you want to test a man's character, give him power. And Abraham Lincoln is one that really tried that one out himself. We're going to take a look uh, at uh, the idea of conserved dynamical quantities uh, today. Um, and uh, we're actually going to hop over chapter 7 and into chapter 8. And then we're going to dip backwards into chapter 7 when I've got enough of chapter 8 on momentum with you. A couple things I want to uh, bring up before we get to that. Um, I believe that I've corrected the huge uh, fiasco from last Friday with the clicking numbers. Um, I just uploaded them a couple hours ago, and hopefully they look ship shape for you. Um, there are some students I know that still have zeros, and what I'm guessing is those students, if you still have a zero and you know you've been here, then it's possible your clicker hasn't registered through to the roster. So we have your clicks, but we don't know which clicker is yours. So what I want what I want, if, if you still have a zero, and it's not going to be as many as it was on Friday, but come after class and we'll try to get it sorted out, okay? Uh, question back there. I wonder if it's not something screwed up with uh, WebCore with Canvas. And, and you know why I say that? Because when I upload stuff, I'll upload all the data, but it takes several minutes to display it. Uh, all right, there's going to be a homework assignment tonight. And it's going to be a, an assignment about your, your clicking numbers and how much you love them and what the problem is with your clicking numbers. And so I'll, I'll just, so in other words, it'll be like a survey to see what, what the problems are. Uh, another thing, uh, there's, uh, what, what I want to do is I'm going to go over all the grades on the written problems of exam one. So what I want you to do right now is take your, wait a minute, did you still have a question? Yeah, um, I don't understand what we're about to I explained it last time. So check the check YouTube, it's on there. Um, what I want everybody in here to do is take out your exam one sheet that has your written work on it with your scores and stuff, pass it to the aisle. I'm going to recollect it and I'm going to eyeball all of it myself. If you don't have it, bring it Wednesday. We'll have a second collection. So dig it out of your your archives if you have it. You never got one? Uh, check with me after lecture. Come up here after lecture. Yeah, just send it out to the aisles, and then you guys in the aisle seats, you know the. Just the yellow one, right? Yeah, just the written part, not the scantron, the written part. Let's go. Yeah, that's what I want. Send it on over. Hurry up. Let's go. Yeah. 
We got dribs and drabs. Hurry up, you guys. Let's move it. There's more coming. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll deal with you in a minute. Any more? Any more coming down the aisle here? Santa, you got some behind you. Is that it? Thanks. Okay, great. I got a, a, a good pile here. Now, before we continue, let me. Oh, here comes one more. All right. Um, before we continue with lecture, let me also ask you um, just a show of hands and raise them high. Don't just go like this. Okay, raise them up way up like this. Um, if you didn't have yours today, because you could, if you didn't have yours today, Ooh, okay. That's a good number. All right. Thank you. All right. So just bring it on Wednesday. We'll do another collection. Or maybe before class, just bring it up here on Wednesday. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I know what mine is, but if I can't find it. Then I won't be able to review yours. Hopefully yours is good. But try to find it. Okay. Did the dog eat your test? No. Yeah. Just try to track it down. You know, I know it's a pain in the neck. Yeah. What's what in the corner in the back? Yeah. Uh, check with me at the end of class. There's one other student with this similar situation. Yeah. No, I guess it's not supposed to be the right score. It's, no, it's supposed to be, but actually. I should. I I made a very hopeful statement here, but it's. I don't know what's going on with these this this data. It's just. When did you When did you check just now? When did you check? Man, I just do not know. Oh, you know what else? Did you look? You know what? Does it say second try on what? Oh, man. All right. Well, we'll continue. It doesn't have to all add up until the end of the semester, but hopefully I'll get this sorted out before then. I have no idea what the problem is. All right. Um, so look for a teeny little assignment, homework uh, A in web courses tonight. You can tell me all about it. All right, I want to talk about uh, conserved quantities. Uh, conserved dynamical quantities. These are the three uh, principal ones that we study in, at least in elementary physics. Physics one and two, in the quantum realm, there are other conserved quantities. Um, and there are, there are quantities um, like electric charge. They're not strictly dynamical. They're existential. In other words, you either have them or you don't. You cannot destroy it. You can only convert it you know, from one object to another. Uh, but energy, momentum, and angular momentum are dynamical. Energy, and, and if, you've, if you've done some reading, as I asked you to do, you'll know that I've um, made several comments on energy and momentum already. Angular momentum is a little deeper in the book. I'll start trying to uh, annotate that tonight. Uh, but energy and momentum are our top, momentum is our topic for today, energy tomorrow. Uh, energy... Raise your hand if you have ever heard the concept mentioned kinetic energy. Raise your hand if you've ever heard. 
Okay, that's a good fraction of you. Go ahead and write down the word kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is what we call the energy of motion. And energy is a mysterious concept. We don't really know what it is. We know that we can calculate it um, as a certain function of the moment uh, of the motion of an object. We know that we can calculate it in terms of the position of an object near a massive body like the Earth. So we can figure out the gravitational energy of a satellite or another planet like the moon uh, or a comet orbiting the sun. Uh, electrical energy. Uh, we can figure out the potential for an electron to get attracted faster and faster toward a proton, depending on how far away they are. We could do that. There are nuclear energy factors as well, because there's, nu there's two nuclear uh, binding forces. Um, momentum is a little bit different. Uh, momentum is a vector quantity, and it is strongly related uh, to the regular velocity. So when we throw something up in the air, a baseball, basketball, or anything, a frisbee, it's got a velocity and it has a mass. And because of that, it has a well-defined momentum. Now, something like a wave in the ocean is it's a bunch of water that's, that's you know, and, and momentum is being transferred through the waves. But it's not, you know, when we look at the waves at, at a Cocoa Beach or someplace like that, um, that water didn't get shipped in from, you know, if it's coming in from the east, the waves are coming in from the east, that water didn't come across the Atlantic. What came across the Atlantic is energy and momentum in the waves. Now, we'll be studying waves a little bit later in the semester. Uh, and it's, it's a really, um, what, what these conserved quantities do is they express the symmetry in four-dimensional space-time of a physical system. In other words, if your physical system, like a, just a, a star with one small planet, okay, so you have a big blob of hydrogen, a lot of kilograms of mass, and let's say that it's a spherical star, and our star is pretty close to spherical. It's a little bit um, oblate, but uh, say so you have a spherical star, the spherical um, symmetry of the system means that wherever that planet is, the only thing that makes a difference is not its latitude and longitude with respect to the sun, but only its distance from the center of the from the center of the star. And when you have a symmetry like that, in other words, you don't have angular any angular factors. You only have the radial uh, distance factor. That means that angular momentum is a conserved quantity. Uh, and another example, if you have a railroad track, if you have a perfect, a mythical frictionless railroad track that's rigid, there's no X, or excuse me, there's, there's no net force, um, positive or, or negative. There's, there's, there's vertical forces downward. One second, my arc reactor. Um, so on a on a on a mythical frictionless railroad track, you know, out in the freight yard, there's no horizontal forces because there's no horizontal gravity. There are some forces, um, and if you could move the railroad car vertically, you would change the energy levels, but as long as you are on the horizontal track, there's no horizontal forces. So, so there's another one where the, the, if, you, if you consider your um, X axis to be the axis of the railroad tracks, and there's no net force, there's no external forces acting along the track. In other words, you're not hooked up to a locomotive or anything. You know, your railroad car is going to keep on going. It's, mom it's X momentum, the X component of its momentum will be conserved. All right, now I'm gonna, so 
try to remember these three words as encoding, as being conserved because of symmetries in the energy levels of a physical system, whether it's angular, uh, spatial, or even temporal. Energy is conserved uh, when there's no time dependence in the system. That's pretty interesting. All right, clicker time. I have a uh, set of IQ tests for you on stopping forces. For those of you that grew up in Florida, these are real snow drifts from last week. Uh, these are out in the mountains of Montana. A friend of mine, um, I, I borrowed this photograph from a friend of mine's uh, webpage, um, and she, she, she was in the process last week of digging out. And you can see these big piles of snow along the road. So, you know, you lose control going around a corner, there's a good chance you're going to come to a stop in a snow drift. Um, but if, if you're in a city, you know, there's a good chance you're going to come to a stop against a brick wall, you know, like, like a building or something. So here's your first IQ test question. Two identical cars. Go ahead and read and uh, young lady with with no clicker points. Do you have go nitro? Okay. And somebody over here had no clicker points. See what you guys are voting for here. Ten seconds to vote. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. By the way, um, I'll, I'll just repeat my warning as I have done a few times already. The eye clickers sometimes do not cast their votes all the way from the back uh, one or two, three rows, especially if you're behind the railing. So if you're up there and you, your clicker figure in web courses is not what it should be, consider moving down. And there's a lot of seats down here in the lower area. And I, I, as I was telling some of the students after class on Friday, I've had students that, you know, they'll go out to, like right now, what's your name up there? Deshaun? Uh, Deshaun, where Deshaun is sitting up there, that's about as far as you can get away from, from my base unit, okay, on the diagonal. And I've had students up in that position, and they can't get a click uh, to register. You know, they're the, you know, we're practicing after lecture, so it's just me and the other student. And clicking up there, no good. Comes down the aisle halfway, all of a sudden I'm getting his clicks. So bear that in mind. Now, some people are, are getting through without a problem. They're getting check marks and everything. But if, you're, if your numbers are low, uh, it, it's possibly that. Even if you're low by, by one or two that you think, you know, you think you've, answered every question and you're still at 14 out of 16, uh, that might be the reason. All right, so let's stop this question. Uh, which exerts more force on the car when it's stopping? Well, let's see here. Snow drift or brick wall? Well, which one stops at the fastest? Brick wall. So brick wall is the answer for this one. And guess what? You guys did not answer that one. Look at this. So, so here's the breakdown. A lot of you voted for D. Both exert the same force. And that is not correct. Uh, they don't even, they don't exert the same force. All right, second IQ test. Now, 
Read carefully and think. You have two cars, both traveling a measly two meters per second. But the mass of one is big and the other is small. Now you're pulling on them with a thousand newtons of force. So you got a rope on, on both of them. All right. But you're going to get dragged like a rag doll. All right. Because so those are both pretty big pieces of steel and rubber. So which one drags you the longest distance? Ten seconds to vote. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, you guys did better on this one. Correct answer is the Escalade. So, and we're going to work this one out on the document camera in a minute. But what what I want you to what, the way I want you to think about this is, you know, think of them as, um, uh, you know, two automobiles on a uh, on a football field, right? And they're it's not you that's providing the force, but they're towing a weight, you know, a sled that's loaded with weight, and the sled pr produces a thousand newtons of friction backwards against their motion. So that would be more realistic. But anyways, so the slowdown force is a thousand newtons. You can think of it as friction, or you can think of your, your own muscles. Um, and the one that drags you the furthest is Escalade. And most of you got that. Here's the, um, here's the scoreboard for this. Uh, what is that? 80, 80%, 80% of you got that one right. Versus the previous one, now they're related. So we're going to work out uh, now on the document cam, the Escalade Prius battle. Um, and so let me pause the YouTube for a second. I think we'll have some more clicking. Okay, so we worked out the Escalade Prius battle. Escalade drags a thousand Newton resistance objects further. And it's because it has more mass. That's the dif differential. Make a note of that. That's the bottom line. The only thing that's different is the mass. It's got more mass. Now, contrast that with the skateboard demonstration that we did on the first day of class. The person with the smaller mass went flying, all right, further distance. So you, you got to think about these things really carefully. And now I'm going to show you a still more excellent way of doing this same or making the same decision about how far or how long it takes for something to come to a stop under a given force. Um, the new concept that we're going to amplify is uh, what Sir Isaac Newton called the quantity of motion. Um, in our day, we call it momentum. And this is the more excellent way uh, of calculating or, or making these dynamical decisions. All right. Now, momentum is a dynamical quantity and basically computed mass times velocity, m times v. Symbol is usually uh, lowercase p. Right, and this is when we talk about Sir Isaac Newton's third law of equal but opposite reaction, the thing that he was thinking about of equal and opposite size is the momentum of the two interacting objects. And he was actually thinking about a uh, universal gravitation. So let's take a look at this. So an example of an interaction um, is. Um, on the football field, 
a small running back versus a bigger linebacker. You know, the linebacker wants to knock the other guy down. The running back wants to knock the linebacker in, down and get a score, get a TD. All right, so who, who rules that interaction? The person not with more mass, not with more speed, but the person with more MV. That is the one that tells, that's the quantity that you look at. Skateboarders. In the skateboard interaction, you have that, that uh, push-off interaction force, and according to Newton's third law, that kind of an interaction is equal but opposite. All right? And they both start with zero momentum. They acquire equal but opposite momentum. The mass times the velocity of the small person is equal to but opposite direction times mass times velocity of the bigger person. All right, it always works out that way. So uh, as I say, our two volunteers, they were different speeds left and right because they had different masses. The same push force, the same amount of contact time, and therefore the same amount of momentum transfer. So the, the person on the left uh, over here gave rightward momentum to the person on the right. The person on the right gave leftward momentum to the person on the left and they went flying off this way. Now I wanna use some momentum concepts to figure out stopping time. So let's do another couple uh, clicker questions. And, hope, and we're gonna start with some cinchy ones. Now these are not momentum, but it's, it's basic calculations step-by-step step, um, for figuring out a momentum uh, calculation and then making a decision. All right. So let me get this. Come on, baby. There we go. A liter of bottle of water, mass of 1.00 kilograms. What's the acceleration? So this is not directly momentum related, but it's Newton's three laws related. Three laws, geez, I was watching iRobot over the weekend in Spanish. On channel 26. It's one of my favorite movies, but I couldn't follow much of it in Spanish. Three laws of robotics. 30 seconds. Things not working the way it's supposed to. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Um, yeah, pretty good. Sixty percent of you got it correct. The yeah, it's just. It's just Excel, it's just F equals MA, or A equals F over M. So your, your force is two newtons, your mass is one kilogram, your acceleration is two. All right, next question. Liter bottle of water, how much extra speed does it gain during this? All right, so we know the acceleration is two. How much speed does it gain? See, now we're getting closer to momentum because we're getting a speed. Read carefully. Do not let me trip you up.
30 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Um, anybody come up with that? Good. Next question, and this will be our last one. How much momentum? How much does the momentum change? Read carefully. Thirty seconds. Don't leave yet. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Very good. All right. Next time we'll start with the impulse equation. You're dismissed. Come on, Dan.